Welcome to the True MMA Show, the program that many of you secretly hoped for, but none of you thought would actually get made. True MMA will feature the latest and greatest grapplings and happenings in the world of mixed martial arts. I'll be traveling the circuit, grounding and pounding with the biggest names in the sport, and making a fool of myself in the process. I'll make you laugh, I'll make you cry, but most importantly, I'll show you what life's like as a reporter covering the fastest growing sport on the planet. As well as being the former UFC light heavyweight champion, Tito Ortiz has been extremely successful outside the cage. He's been in movies, television shows, has his own clothing line, and this year he was a contestant in the Celebrity Toyota Grand Prix. When I had my practice, you know, I think I pressed it a little too hard. I hit the wall. I ran into Jermon. Um, I was all over the place. Is it true that you wrecked Tito Ortiz the other day? Well, you got your story wrong. You mean uh, Tito Ortiz wrecked my car? Jaiman Unsu. You, well, you, you can't say my name. That's why you gotta, you gotta hand it over. I just, ex I just explained it to you just now. If you're gonna correct me twice on my own show. I can't promise there may not be an issue with your car during the race. You've got to wonder, are these celebrities a bit nervous to race with Tito Ortiz? He did wreck a car during practice. You know, are you worried about wrecking in the race? Are you going to be ready? No, I ain't going to wreck in the race. No way. Now I know the limits of the car and it ain't going to happen again. Now I'm back up, revving like a NASCAR engine, attacking a backboard like Shannon Brown at Game 7. I'm getting it in. Well, if it happens, I am going to put Tito in a rear naked choke. Let me ask you. been practicing. You want me to show you? A woman choke me? Does she even have to ask? Ah! Ah! I gotta stay away from Tito Ortiz. Uh, I'd rather get uh, get hit by his car than one of his punches, for sure. <laughs> if, uh, there's one guy that can take a hit, I'm sure, is that guy. So uh, I think it's not gonna be a worry. No, he's a really fast competitor. He really knows what he's doing out there. Hey, don't blame me for being a sellout. I love the Jonas Brothers. Mmm, bop. Mm, 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 bop. Brian, Austin Green. I'm here with David Silver, we're, uh, one of the former guys from 90210. Hopefully I won't see him unless he's taking out a group of people and he's against the wall and I'm passing him. Uh, I, I shouldn't have to race with him because he's out of his mind. Hell no, I'm not injured. That was some fun right there, baby. Woo! Any chance I can ride shotgun with you in the race? I don't know. You got to ask them. You're more than welcome to if you can. I knew something was funny when you handed me the key to a 1987 diesel Mercedes Benz. The races were great. But let's get real. I was there looking for a hot celebrity sugar mama. You're groomed, you have a good look. Handsome, doesn't hurt. You seem intelligent, we like that. Us girls, we don't want much, I think. We want a nice guy with a decent job. Do you have any job openings by any chance? Yeah, I just work here, man. You have to come back for the manager. And, uh, I don't know, can you fight? I'm actually the MMA celebrity champion. <laughs> Just catch your breath, and the next step will be into the chair. Do we need to say any more? It's over. Probably my favorite MILF of all time from Good Day LA to Fox 11 here in Southern California, Jillian Barbary Reynolds. So when you meet a hot chick, especially a hot celebrity chick, you have to play it cool. Don't let them know that you like them. Don't give them any compliments. Just play it cool. I hate to admit it, I'm kind of embarrassed. I've had a crush on you since I was uh, in middle school, maybe high school. Okay, fine. So I panic when I get around hot chicks. At the end of the day, I'm a journalist, and I love conducting post-fight interviews. However, this was the first time I conducted a post-race interview. Check out my Guerrilla Tactics as I show you behind the scenes what it takes to get the post-race exclusive. Record. I'm going to just go for a Guerrilla interview. Tito, are you injured from the wreck? Tito, are you injured? Are you injured? Hell no, I'm not injured. That was some fun right there, baby. Woo! That's what Toyota's is all about. You were so close, Tito. Did you think you were going to wreck on the last lap? Uh, I thought I was. Jared kind of 
got in front of me and I thought I'd cut him off and he hit my rear end and put me in the tires. I thought I better back up as quick as possible because I know Jonas was behind me, so I had to catch up. Was there anyone blocking you in that might have to get some ground and pound right now or was it a clean race? Oh, it was a dirty race. It was fun though. This is for charity, for uh, racing for kids and that's all it's all about. Thanks for Toyota for bringing me out. I appreciate it. This is Aaron Schrute from May Show here with Tito Ortiz's beautiful wife, Jen Jameson. Tito was so close, almost made it the whole race without crashing. What went through your head when he finally did crash? I was really excited that he held on and he stayed in the race. And uh, it was only a matter of time before he got squirrely and went for it. He's not afraid of wrecking. We all know that, right? What was more nerve-wracking, watching him race today or watching him fight in the UFC? I think that him driving is much more nerve-wracking because, I mean, He's a, he's a professional fighter. I think this is going to be his new career, though. I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> Just in case he is a little banged up from that crash, are you going to uh, take care of him tonight and make sure he's all right for his fight against Ryan Bader? Oh, of course. I mean, I, the guy's so tough. He came home last night and was just like, oh, he just shook it off. No big deal. He just wanted to get back in the car. Thank you for your time. Congratulations, guys. Oh, good job. What about me, guys? What about me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tito crashed on the final lap of the race. No, I ain't gonna wreck in the race, no way. Now I know the limits of the car and it ain't gonna happen again. But he had a lot of fun with the fans and raised money for a great charity. Time for Technique of the Week. Okay, this week we're going to be doing a basic arm lock attack from side mount, or just a basic arm lock uh, setup. It's starting off by blocking the hip, okay, and elbow over. It's like um, some of the previous moves we've done. Um, hand down by the hip, I'm going to start walking to north south to get him to reach a little bit and separate his elbow from his body. Okay, I'm going to be attacking with the other arm. Okay, once I get this arm inside, I'm going to lay on top of that arm, okay, so I can grab onto the wrist and connect the two. Okay, this grip here is real, real important. You get Kimuras from here, you get straight arm locks, take in the back. Um, what you need to realize here is that once I have this grip, I can pretty much stand up and separate myself and he's not going to be able to get his elbow back. Go and turn in, turn into uh, towards your arm, Jeremy. All right, see, I can keep control of his arm just by just by that grip. Okay. Once I establish, I like to hop around all the way to the other side. Throwing the leg over if I need to. A lot of times people block, so you're going to need to turn it into spider web. Okay. But if he doesn't block, we can finish with the arm the arm lock without the leg over the body. Let's make sure we pinch our knees together. Come in the back door. Laying on top of the arm so I can grab the wrist. Connect the two together. Okay. Now you can walk around to the other side and do it slow. That's fine. Or you can trust your trust this grip. Jump all the way around. Okay, guys, that's our technique for the week. My name is Sean Bollinger. I'm my partner Jeremy Fields. You can check us out on 10thplanetjjrip.com. Yeah. No. No, I hear you. And and. And that's ridiculous. You, you just made me a lowball offer. No, no, he's not going to do the photo shoot. What? Penny? That's pennies on the dollar. Absolutely not. I need that. I need that gig. Okay, I'll call you back. Bye. I need that gig, Wolf. What the hell? Trust me, you don't want that gig right now. We're going to make him sweat it out, all right? I mean, I don't want to call you out. You've done a great job for my career and all, but you care about this stupid dog more than me. This dog is my life, okay? When times were tough, during the recession, experiencing economic hardships, and I found this guy on the street, and, you know, I got him a couple gigs. How much did we make? Well, you know, a couple dollars here and there, but... He started in the Shaggy Dog 4 that went straight to DVD. It wasn't even in the theaters, Wolf. What I'm asking you is, what are you gonna do for me? My career's starting to blow up, we got the TV show now, I need some publicity. What do you have lined up this week? Well, I have a documentary. It's the Evan Tanner documentary called I Once Was a Champion. Um, there's going to be a red carpet there. Sounds pretty good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> a bunch of media will do uh, most likely five to ten interviews, and it'll be perfect. It's your perfect chance to, you know, expose yourself to the world. So there's going to be lights, girls, champagne, red carpets, the whole thing? All of that. Trust me. 
How's it going, man? Dude, what the hell is this? I entrusted this guy with my career and he screwed me. He told me there was gonna be TMZ, bright lights, and where the hell is the red carpet? I do not know, let me find out. Uh, this is not what I was told was gonna to be taking place. Where's don't the red carpet? Don't worry, there'll be media showing up shortly. Don't Where's the red carpet? This is downtown LA, this is not a Hollywood movie premiere. There's supposed to be a red carpet here. There's only guys like this in a suit. But you know what? I prepared for this moment for a long time. What the hell is that word? I always carry a makeshift red carpet. This is perfect. This is great, great shot. We'll get a camera crew over here, and you'll make your own little red carpet. No one will know. So you're telling me to fill my own red carpet right here like this? <laughs> you see a better option? This is ridiculous. I'm supposed to stand on this thing? Who am I? F***ing Aladdin? What True doesn't get is that, you know, all they're going to see is a tip of the red carpet. That's all they're going to see. They're not going to see anything more. So it doesn't matter if there's A-list celebrities or D-list celebrities. As long as they see that little piece of red carpet, that's all that matters. This is Aaron True outside the premiere of I Once Was a Champion, the industry screening with the director, one guy who's responsible for the movie, Jared Roxburgh. Tell us about the movie. What are we doing here tonight? How's it going? Uh, making a film about Evan Tanner, uh, former UFC champion, and I've uh, been working on it for probably about two years, and now it's coming to fruition. I actually met Evan online. I was just a fanboy trolling the forums, like, you know, MMA.TV and Sherdog, and I used to follow his blog because I wanted insight into training, and I uh, ended up reading his blog. It had nothing to do with training, and I was going to make a documentary about him sobering back up and getting into the UFC. And at the same time, my uncle died. And so I decided to go make a movie about him back in Scotland. And while that all happened, then Evan ended up getting back in and then he passed away. And then it just made sense to natural progression was to make a film about him. As a director, your job is to tell a story. Tell us uh, the most important part of Evan Tanner's story that you tried to capture in this movie. It's a tough question. Uh, Would it be maybe his impact he had on everyone else, all the friends and uh, people in society? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, this is definitely like a character piece because depending upon when you knew Evan, you knew a different side of Evan. So it's, it's really about how one guy can have so many different impacts on so many different people's lives. And the important thing to understand is this isn't, this isn't a fluff film for Evan Tanner. This is, you know, a, a true to life, what he went through and how he affected people as true as Jared can make it. So I think that's what's important to understand. Well, I'm here to uh, pay the respects to Evan and, uh, it looks like it's going to be a great documentary. I'm really stoked about it. He was a really free-spirited philosopher, um, a lot like me in life, and uh, went on great adventures in his boat and everything that I always like to read about. He died tragically at a young age. Do you believe in the afterlife or reincarnation, or where do you think his spirit is now? Do you think he's gone, or that he still has a part here in the universe? He's still around us. Well, Albert Einstein said a really good thing that uh, energy and matter can't be destroyed, only transformed. And we got these virtual particles in quantum physics that cause other particles to decay into different particles, plus the energy transmission. So I think oh, that's just a, a radical transformation onto bigger and better things. And um, it'll be great to see what the Great Spirit has in store for us. Um, it's, uh, it's just a beautiful universe and awesome to be part of it. Like we're all surfing the infinitely accelerating current of creativity and the interconnectedness of art and science and spirituality. And it's, uh, it was great to know Evan. Um, all people's lives that he touched, he made better and inspired and to be free thinkers and artistic. And the Evan Tanner documentary was very moving and well done. I hope you can all check it out sometime and see what an incredible fighter and human being Evan Tanner was. All in all, it was a great night. But when it comes to my publicist, Wolf, it was too good to be true. I've worked in PR for about five years now. Um, started out doing um, a little bit of sales, a little bit of marketing, but uh, then I went uh, to another company and did more work with uh, celebrities, you know, uh, mainly A-listers, some B-listers, sprinkle in a couple C-listers. Um, it was music and sports, so um, got to see a lot, probably more than I wanted to see. So when True tells me that I don't know what I'm doing, you know, I'm not doing things the right way or I need to do this a little bit better, part of me listens, but the other part of me says he's got no idea what he's talking about. So. You know, I just chalk it up to, it's a publicist job. It's a publicist job. 
Yeah, I'll sign off on that. Hi guys, today we're gonna be doing the sledgehammer. Sledgehammer's been a staple in MMA conditioning since the back in UFC 1. Pretty much what we're gonna be doing today is taking a different version of the sledgehammer technique. We're gonna be doing the long handle. This is gonna be working a little more core, rotation, hips. It's more geared for jujitsu and judo versus striking. I'm gonna start with the hammer in a long handle stance. So grabbing it all the way down. You'll step through, exploding through the hips and abs, and it'll look something like this. Each week, I take on one of the biggest stars in all of MMA, and to do that, I've got to be in tip-top shape, not just inside the cage, but with my nutrition and with my diet. That's why I have my own celebrity chef. Hold up! When you're in my kitchen, I make the rules. The key ingredient, right here, mom's meatloaf. Sounds hard as a rock, doesn't it? Last time I checked, there's no fat in butter. Now, what goes best with olive oil? Garlic. Without garlic powder, you're screwed. <laughs> you might think a lot of oil for, uh, you know, just a couple eggs there, huh? Boom. There it is. It looks like this kind of frittata thing, um, but again, a lot of amateurs out there claiming to be chefs. What are my credentials? Hulk Hogan before Hogan knows best. Randy Counter, Uriah Faber, Royce Gracie before they called him Royce. Jose Aldo before everybody knew to call him Jose. Leona Machado before he kicked out Randy Couture's teeth. Yeah. You know you gotta punch the meat, punch the meat, punch the meat, punch the meat. Bang, 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 bang. That the Aaron's got bitch tits and bubber gum. He needs protein. Now, woo, that's hot. There it is. We're just gonna let this kind of cook for like, you know, three to seven hours. You wanna get to the point where the egg basically disappears over here. Aaron's got a big fight ahead of him, all right? I need him to be in tip top shape, all right? That's why it's all protein, pure protein. That's how he's gonna win. What we got here is a guy's big slab of horse meat, all right? <laughs> Pretty much like what I've been doing for over and for years. Uh, yeah, it's, it looks like meatloaf, but I call it horse calf. If you're confused why I have this, don't be confused. It's called the thyroid problem. Look it up. I can outrun anybody, anytime, any day. I run a 4.6. With my meals, my diet plan, true will beat anybody. Delicacy. It's still frozen. As Truce publicist, it's my job to make sure he has the best possible relationship with all of his fans. How do I achieve this? By reading and responding to fan mail. In this segment, uh, Real Original Anonymous, Anonymous writes in from Des Moines, Iowa. Dear True, I'm an 8th grader, and like most 8th graders, I have problems with bullies picking on me. They bully me all the time. I'm also a little person, which makes matters worse. Can you offer me any advice as to how I can deal with these bullies? Well, Anonymous, you request, we deliver. Uh, I have a hypochondroplasia. It's a dwarfism. Growing up sucked. Like I fought. Like I'd get picked on, made fun of all my life, and uh, just. So I looked in, I wrestled, just got into wrestling so I could take my anger out, did good in wrestling, and then got into MMA, and I'm here right here. Let me introduce you to my good friend, Tyler Holkans Freeland. He is the only dwarf who's a professional MMA fighter. We decided to go a few rounds toe to toe. Check out what happens. Bet you on the edge of your seat. Opti, get him. We know we gotta step it up every time. To keep you guys locked in the sound, you know what I'm saying? So we touch gloves and I figure, okay, a friendly little sparring session. No pun intended. Been training in the dojo so we could go head up. The victory's guaranteed kind of like a setup. This little guy's trying to decapitate me.
It's not bad enough the guy's chopping me down and trying to knock my head off. Now we're doing takedowns. Tyler Holkans Freeland has an incredibly inspirational story. Although he has hydrochondroplasia dwarfism, that hasn't stopped him from being a success in life. He is now an undefeated professional mixed martial arts fighter. If you want to contact the True MMA Show or send us a shout out, reach us at truemmashow.com.